Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to another Gotham Knights commentary. If you find yourself enjoying the video at any point, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell if you're into Gotham Knights news and all of that good stuff. I want to talk about a Poison Ivy Easter egg that was recently revealed from WB Games Montreal and also a potential release date in a new poster. So this is a news video. I will note that I've gotten a lot of comments in some of my old commentary videos in the past month or two from, from Gotham Knights that, uh, oh, all you're doing is rambling and, you know, just get to the point and get to the point of the news. And just to get a disclaimer out there for everybody, you know, I, I do report on the news. This video is talking about news and, you know, relevant information that some of the trades are picking up like comicbook.com and that type of thing. But uh, I'm not really a news channel. Um, you will get all of the news, like any big news hit that comes out, I will talk about. But I mean, even back in Arkham Knight, I really got my start and started getting a bunch of traction when I was doing my reviews of the Nightwing DLC and, you know, th like that type of thing. So I consider myself more of a commentator than a news reporter. So just keep that in mind if you listen to my commentaries. I mean, it's a salient point. It's your opinion that I ramble too much and that's your opinion. But uh, just keep that in mind that I'm not just going to make like two minute videos of like, oh, here's the news. You know, I I'm going to give you the news and probably give you my opinion, whether you like it or not. So that's pretty much what we do around here. But let's get into the recent drop from WB Games Montreal. So over the Christmas break, they posted a tweet here. Christmas in Gotham is something else. Hashtag Gotham Knights. And there were two things kind of notable about this image that a lot of people picked up on. I picked up on one of them in the comments. And one of them I did not pick up on. And I will talk about what I did pick up on first. And that was obviously the dates here underneath the Halley Circus Flying Grayson's poster. Tuesday, July 16th to Sunday, July 21st here listed on the poster. Of course, this seems like some poster, just like if I were to get a movie poster for The Dark Knight, right? It would have the release date of The Dark Knight, which doesn't really have any, you know, credence because the movie came out so many years ago and the circus could have taken place years ago and, you know, Dick Grayson just puts it up on his wall in the Belfry. So it, it's possible that it could be nothing and they really didn't even put thought into the dates. I will say that if you look up the dates for 2021, Tuesday, July 16th is not an actual date. July 16th falls on a weekend. So that's one thing to consider as well, that they probably could have made it more direct if they wanted it to have real world implications of, hey, hey, here's our date. You know, keep in mind, this is this is something we're hinting at. So it's not something that I would necessarily put a lot of thought to. However, here's the curveball with this. Of course, WB Games is releasing two video games this year. They're releasing Gotham Knights and they are releasing Hogwarts Legacy, which is a, you know, Harry Potter game, essentially. And personally, I'm excited for both of these games. But the thing is, is that Warner Brothers, to my knowledge, has never in their history posted two or released two games in the same month. So they're not going to self-compete with one another. And what do I mean by that? Well, it's kind of like what Activision does. It's basically every publisher, EA as well. They spread out their releases. You know, most major publishers, whether that be Activision, EA, Warner Brothers, they release a few titles per year. You know, video games are, are you know, they take so long to make. They're incredibly complicated, becoming more complicated and difficult to make. So you spread them out, you know, and you don't want to drop both of your games in the same month. Let's say both of them were targeting a November release date. Holiday season, that's when most games are released. But it's basically the most important game for each studio comes out in November, but they're never going to release two games in that same period. So Warner Brothers is never going to drop Arkham and Injustice or Hogwarts Legacy and Gotham Knights in the same month. It's just, you know, you're competing with yourself. You're taking sales away from your competition, quote unquote, which is actually your game. You make money if you sell Hogwarts Legacy. You make money if you sell Gotham Knights. So you want them to be spaced out and give people the opportunity to save up and purchase your game. And that's not really possible if both of your games come out in November. Most people have a budget of um, study show, basically one to two video games per year. Most people buy only a few games a year. And as a result of that, you want to spread out when your games come out. You certainly don't want to put them out in the same month. Uh, ideally not even in the same year, but certainly not in the same month. So I say all of this to say Hogwarts Legacy and Gotham Knights are not going to both come out in November, which makes me think one of these games is probably going to come out in the summer and one will come out in November. Again, November is where they're going to put their biggest game, what they perceive to be their biggest game. 
And the trick with this is, ordinarily, if this were Batman Arkham, I would say, well, certainly, you know, Batman Arkham is going to come out in, because Batman Arkham is going to be bigger than Hogwarts Legacy. But Harry Potter is a big franchise. You can't underestimate Harry Potter. Not only that, this, you know, quote-unquote Batman game doesn't even have Batman in it. It's, it's literally a sidekick game with B-list characters. You know, I, I mean, say what you will. I'm a huge Batgirl fan, as everybody knows. I'm a huge Nightwing fan. Red Hood or you know, Robin. Every, I, I love everybody in this game. But it's not going to have the same marketing appeal as Batman Arkham City with the Joker and Batman. It's just not. I mean, that's objectively, self-evidently true. I would bet a lot of money that this game is not going to sell more than Batman Arkham Knight. You know, I would be pretty confident in that bet. So, with that being said, they might look at Hogwarts Legacy as, you know, Harry Potter games historically have done very well. I remember playing Harry Potter games back on the PSP, you know, quite a while ago, and there were a lot of really good ones, and they sold quite well. So, they could be looking at Hogwarts Legacy as something that actually has higher sale potential than Gotham Knights, at which point that would take the November slot, and they would set a deadline for WB Games Montreal to hit in the summer. Additionally, another thing to note is that we got gameplay for Gotham Knights back in August. We have yet to see any gameplay for Hogwarts Legacy. We saw a very, very brief CGI trailer. Um, you know, gameplay evidently was leaked back in September, but that was leaked gameplay. You know, they have the PlayStation reveal trailer from September. Gotham Knights was revealed in August, but in August it was revealed with gameplay. And a full CGI trailer that was much longer than the Harry, Harry uh, not the Harry Potter, I keep saying Harry Potter, Hogwarts Legacy trailer. And given all that context, I'm kind of going with you guys on my poll. Another thing, I did post a poll here where I asked, when do you guys think Gotham Knights is going to come out? Of course, this is asking fans who are biased and want the game to come out earlier. So this isn't like necessarily saying anything of when the game is going to come out or not. But I posted the poll. 61% of people said that the game will come out in summer. And notice I said release date prediction. So people are supposed to be giving me their prediction and not when they want the game to come out. And I did make that distinction. A lot of people in the comments provided pretty salient explanations as to why they feel the game will come out in summer in, instead of November. And a lot of people are pointing out what I'm pointing out to you right now is that Gotham Knights and Hogwarts Legacy cannot come out in the same month. They have to pick either when it's to come out in the summer, when it's to come out in in November. Now, a lot of people in the comments were responding, no, it's not going to come out in summer. It's going to come out in March or April, which in my opinion is too ambitious. We're not going to get the game before summer. If we were, we would already be getting pre-orders. But we know that Warner Brothers likes that tight timeline between reveal and launch. They've already extended much farther than they've ever gone. I mean, literally with Arkham Knight and Arkham City and other games like that, they were planning for five to six months. Of course, Arkham Knight was delayed, but in Arkham City, it was like five months. Arkham Knight was planned to be six. So I'm very curious to see which game will take which slot. It, it's not really a question to me whether or not that is going to be the timeline. It's just a matter of which game is in September uh, or excuse me, um, you know, August or June, July in that range, and which game is going to be in the November, December range. Again, my hope is that Gotham Knights will come out in the summer, but I, I don't really know. Another thing is that with the Batman film was supposed to come out in the summer of 2021. Of course, that was delayed, but that could have been a marketing strategy where they planned uh, a year ago or a year and a half ago, hey, you know, this new Batman movie is going to come out in the summer of 2021 with Robert Pattinson, and we want this Gotham Knights game to come out alongside it. WB is also really into that. You know, their their movies come out near their um, games and that type of thing. So I don't foresee this game getting delayed. I don't foresee it being a 2022 title, but it is a serious question as to whether or not it will be coming out in the summer or November. I, I personally would be devastated if it got delayed because... The wait has already been so incredibly long. At least that's what it feels like to me. So I'd be quite disappointed if the game was delayed. But at, at this point, with how huge these titles are getting, and we've seen with Cyberpunk, we've seen with other games, like it's better to delay than release prematurely a poor product. But I'm really hoping that they can they can finish this game at the very latest by November and maybe even get the game by summer. Because you have to consider, if they drop this game in August, which is summer, that would be a year from when they posted pre-alpha footage. That is a reasonable amount of time to get the game. It is it is reasonable. Um, 
So I certainly could see July or August. And in the case of Arkham Knight, they were trying to do June. So WB is clearly not averse to releasing the game in the summer. So we'll just have to wait and see there. Um, moving on to the second topic of this video, which is probably much shorter, uh, but is kind of a subtle confirmation of a particular villain. Of course, if you want to see my Easter eggs video where I go through several villains that have already been confirmed, we've already seen Anarchy thugs you know we've seen other villains confirmed so i'll link that video in the description below it has over 100,000 views so a lot of people have expressed interest in that it's one of the most viewed gotham knights video on youtube so uh, check that out it's pretty well made and i think you guys will enjoy it if you haven't seen a full breakdown of all the easter eggs that were in that first gameplay and and reveal trailer but when it comes to this confirmation you'll see here in the poster once again going back to that same poster that i mentioned earlier on the gotham knights twitter it mentions here at the bottom of the poster, Robinson Park, and this is something that I missed. This is the part of the Easter egg that I didn't see. And that was the Robinson Park mention at the bottom of the poster, and if you don't know, I didn't notice this right away, but I, I was aware of the fact that Robinson Park is basically very highly associated with Poison Ivy. Typically, the botanical gardens, which are sometimes, you know, Gotham Botanical Gardens, Gotham City Botanical Gardens, it's called different things in different runs but Robinson Park is basically the broader home of that and then the Gotham City Botanical Gardens are within the the Robinson Park and Robinson Park is it kind of mentions here on dcfandom.com is pretty similar to Central Park it's like this really broad sprawling park area and then as I mentioned you know the Botanical Gardens are within that so it's kind of the home of Poison Ivy and that's an allusion and reference to Poison Ivy directly like Robinson Park isn't known for anything else in in Gotham City besides um, you know Poison Ivy but it's very impressive to me that they've already had so many allusions and references as I mentioned you can check out the Easter egg video with like there are so many little things that they've pointed out and it shows that they have a really deep knowledge of of the canon I know that they had posted a reading list of a lot of comic books that they've read in making this game and fan favorites of everybody working on the title and also you know they've just already impressed me with how many easter eggs and little things they've been alluding to so i think this is going to be a game with a bunch of easter eggs and just a really rich deep understanding of of the canon and lore which i'm very excited for as for poison ivy i'm, I'm very curious with poison ivy just like more broadly speaking the balance between batman and villains and villains that are known to be more specific to these villains or excuse me these heroes for instance you know batgirl is highly associated with killer moth if you read batgirl year one killer moth is the main antagonist and obviously he's there you know fighting batgirl the entire way killer moth is not particularly known as a batman villain ever since batgirl year one it, it, he really is the leading foe there and then additionally there are new villains that have been introduced in the new 52 with nightwing there are a bunch of great ones uh not new 52 sorry with rebirth there are a bunch of great ones new 52 uh nightwing it wasn't even nightwing it was called uh you know agent dixon and it was really not good but in the case of batgirl once again you have the mirror in the volume one of gail simone's new 52 run again with nightwing you have some great rebirth villains that were introduced and created and with Red Hood, obviously, with the Outlaws, there are some Outlaw-specific villains that are more notoriously associated with the Outlaws. So I'm very interested to see that balance and what that's going to look like. You know, are they really going to lean into the villains that are known to be um, villains for these four heroes? Or is it going to be broader, just like, hey, you know, this is the Batman rogues gallery, we're going to see Joker, we're going to see Poison Ivy. But to me, this is pretty much a a direct reference to Poison Ivy likely being in the game which I would support. I, I think that it should be a pretty close 50-50 balance. Uh, also, once again, Mr. Freeze. You know, Mr. Freeze is not known as as a, you know, Robin villain or a Batgirl villain or anything in the same way that Killer Moth would be or, or something like that. So I'm really leaning towards the fact that it's going to be a pretty heavy balance towards Batman villains like Mr. Freeze and Poison Ivy and Joker and Two-Face and blah, blah, blah. But I think they are going to sprinkle in some some villains from the comics that people would really really be excited to see and i'm just curious to see how exactly that's going to pan out so that's really it for today guys i'm curious to know in the comments below what villains would you like to see in the game give me a top five list of villains you would like to see once again it can be villains that are more known and associated with 
these particular heroes, which, by the way, for Red Hood, I mean, the main Red Hood antagonist is the Joker. The Joker happened to kill him. <laughs> so, uh, And with Batgirl, he paralyzed her. So, like, with all those things, it doesn't have to be necessarily that, oh, it's these tiny, obscure villains that are known as villains for our four heroes in this game. No, you know, the Joker's a huge villain, obviously, but then there's also, once again, like Killer Moth and other villains that are not as well-known that are really, really well-associated with these heroes. So I'm curious to know in the comments below, top five villains you'd like to see in the game that have not already been confirmed, Anarchy has already been confirmed, and Mr. Freeze and others. So um, of the villains that have not yet been confirmed, leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. My name is Slick Moth. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Also, be sure to give the video a like, as I mentioned. And if you'd like to become a member of the channel, it's only five bucks a month, and you get a bonus video every single Sunday. See you guys in the next one. Peace out.